Hello, I'm Patrick Mann in London, Ontario. It's a pleasure to welcome you to this panel on art and activism, which is part of Up With Art 2020. And now it's my honor to introduce CBC London's Chris Delatore. Thank you very much, Patrick. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Chris Delatore. I host Afternoon Drive on CBC Radio One, and it's a pleasure to be here as your moderator for this panel discussion. So let's meet our, our panelists. Let's start with Jamili Hassan, a well-established visual artist based here in London. She's been awarded the Governor General's Award in Visual and Media Arts, the 125, the Canada 125 Medal for Outstanding Community Service, among other accolades. Hi there, Jamili. Good morning, Chris. Uh, Jeff Burke is a self-taught multidisciplinary artist that works with photography, sculpture, video, and paint. He's based in Toronto, and his work has been exhibited nationally. It often includes themes that uh, include grief and addiction. Hi there, Jeff. Hi, Chris. Uh, let's meet Jack Jesse Jacobs, a London-based artist. His work includes elements of psychedelia and spirituality. His latest book, Crawl Space, from 2017, won the, the Doug Wright Award for Best Book. Hi there, Jesse. Hi, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Let's meet Judith Roger, freelance curator and art historian based here in London and adjunct professor in the Department of Visual Arts at Western University. Hi there, Judith. Good morning, Chris. And Brian Meehan is with us, executive director and chief curator of Museum London. Hi there, Brian. Morning, Chris. And Sylvia Langer, Development Director for Unity Project for Relief of Homelessness in London, and she's coordinator of the Up With Art show since 2011. Hi there, Sylvia. Hello, Chris, and nice to see everyone. So let's uh, get going by, uh, I'll put this question to all of you, and if you could respond uh, in just a sentence or two uh, in regards to what immediately comes to your mind when you think of art and activism. Uh, Sylvia, I'll start with you. Well, I always think of uh, artists or what makes uh, them particularly prone to activism is because they are uh, people who are paying attention and um, really um, uh, from their perspective of, of paying attention to what's going on in the world. And I guess also from their own, uh, typically, especially maybe at the beginning, not being uh, necessarily like being of a, um, of a, a real working class and perhaps experiencing poverty themselves have a perspective that leads to activism, whether uh, you know challenging or just capturing those kinds of zeitgeists of our time. And, um, and certainly the art and the Up With Art show, mu much of it really relates to the time that we're in from exactly that kind of activist perspective. Thanks, Sylvia. Judith, how about you? Well, when I began to think about it, um, I have a longer term perspective than the rest of you, I believe. Uh, I thought about how uh, activism with a capital A connected to art is really more of a 21st century phenomenon. And I've learned that there is even a term now called artivism and that in 2018, OCAD started their first undergraduate degree in art and activism. That's not to say that there wasn't always activism among artists about various causes, and we'll talk more about that. Right. Uh, Thanks, and specifically, uh, I'm thinking of the artists that I've done the most. Jeff Kern or Greg Kerno, I imagine you're talking about. Sorry, I yes, I I'm talking. Cut sorry, you off there, I, no, that's okay. I was thinking, of course, about Greg Kerno, who I've uh, studied a lot and uh, how he was involved in um, various ways in uh, starting off with the celebration that he did in 1962, which involved a community and artists from Toronto. And he famously, the poster, he was holding up the band, the bomb symbol. So it, it, all through his career, he was identifying various um, aspects including the famous Dorval mural, which was an anti-war protest. And um, there's many other um, examples that maybe we can talk if we, about if we have time. Sure, yeah, hopefully we can get to, to a lot of that stuff later on. Uh, Jeff Burke, how about you? Where do you see art and activism intersecting? Um, I think I really believe in, in the power of art. Um, 
its ability to kind of translate the complex or the spiritual. Um, and so I think it has a real place. Um, and I also believe in the power of collective action. Um, I think for me, those two things feel really different. Um, but definitely there's this kind of like place where they can collide and where they can be in collaboration. That's like really beautiful. I think it's great. Mm. And Jamili, how about you? Where do you see art and activism uh, intersecting and the relationship there? Well, um, I, I agree with this idea that it is um, a collective action and solidarity around shared values and refusing the inequalities and injustices that um, we see around us. So a lot of artists um, ha um, have come forward and recognized uh, the predicaments and um, noted them well in advance of um, a situation, but many of us have also responded to conditions as they are happening in the world. Mm. And Brian, do you, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, well, just from a museum standpoint, I think what organizations as opposed to individual artists can do is, is uh, become a place where activism can can take place and be a, be a facilitator for for the artists as well as as well as trying to uh, push positive change as an organization and Jesse Jacobs uh, where do you see the intersection of art and activism um I, I agree a lot with what Jamali said there um, I think both art and activism can be a lot of different things um, we live in this culture that puts such an extreme emphasis on individuality. I think that's needed to make capitalism work, um, but it can also kind of reduce our collective compassion towards other people. I think art and uh, political activism are both, you know, they both have the potential to sort of remind us um, that we are like, we're all in it together, uh, you know, of our connectivity. Yeah. Now, what about, what artists and people who work for social justice have in common and, and whether or not there's some common goals there. Sylvia, do you want to take that one on? Sure, um, I'll get that started. Uh, I guess they, well, for one, I guess in, in terms of Unity Project's uh, perspective, um, many of the, of, the, of the founding members of Unity Project and the staff and the participants themselves are artists. And um, so um, they have a, uh, like I said, a capacity to, they're, they're paying attention and uh, responding in the world in, the, in, a, um, an, in an emotional way, um, as has been mentioned, a spiritual way. And so uh, there is, there is a, quite an overlap and then not only just from artists themselves, but people who are interested in art find that kind of inspiration because of the way it uh, moves us, uh, the way that art moves us. And so there, um, what we've found through Up With Art, uh, especially as it's grown, and it, but it has inspired people toward an activism in very unexpected ways amongst groups of people who have not necessarily been associated with activism before. Yeah, it's interesting that anyone uh, can be moved by art and, and anyone, regardless of their socioeconomic situation, uh, can be moved to create, right? Which is, when you compare that with uh, this idea that art, especially high art, is, is for the privilege and it's for the elite, I mean, it's, it's quite clear uh, that there are limits to that to that way of thinking. Uh, Jeff, did you have anything to add to that? I mean, yeah, I, I, I can get behind that. I just don't feel like that's how it has to be, right? And I often feel that um, the, the, there's just like this like assumption of like a big limitation right now for me in terms of what it feels to be an artist. Um, and I think like it's important, uh, this panel is so beautiful because it helps me like connect with people that came before me. Um, so I think it's important to honor the legacy of like the people that came uh, before and the kind of like pathways they've opened uh, for someone like me. Um, and I think it's also just interesting to think of like my life, like, like the art making for me is just like one sliver of my life. And it's like one expression amongst many expressions. Um, and I don't really feel like my life is disconnected. So if I'm 
you know, in a, in a detox doing emotional work with men. That has nothing to do with my art practice, but it has everything to do with the way I'm in the world. And I kind of carry that into a painting or a photograph or a conversation. Um, so I think, it, I think everything for me feels connected. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, you know, the art making is, is just like a sliver of that. Yeah. That makes well, sense? Jeff, well, it, yeah, absolutely. And Jeff, and while we have you on, I, I want to ask you uh, some more about your work specifically. And, and I'd like to go back after this to, to Judith and Jamili to talk a bit more about London's art history. But while, but while we're talking about Jeff, uh, tell us a bit more about some of your projects and, and how you came to work in the way that you do. Okay, yeah, it's a really long story, so I'm going to try to condense it. Um, but basically, uh, I make work, I make, uh, I'm a portrait artist, I make uh, photographs that are in collaboration with people. I've come to view uh, portraiture as collaboration, in the sense that my photographs wouldn't be possible without the lived experience of the people that I'm photographing. Um, I mostly photograph my friends, um, and I believe that, uh, I believe in collaboration in a, re in a real way, in the sense that if I'm photographing someone, they'll get named as an artist in a show. We split all the profits 50-50, and that's just been a really exciting way uh, to include some of my friends that don't have access to the same kind of world that I do, uh, and, and kind of like move money around and make sure everyone's taken care of in this really small way. And I understand that before you got to that place, when you were finding yourself as an artist and a photographer, uh, you've, you've told me before that you were, you were photographing people who somehow reflected your own story and some of the things that you went through, but then you found that there were, there were certain limitations to that approach to you as well, right? Yeah, I think that um, I, I was lucky that my parents were artists, so I was raised with this idea that becoming an artist was a, was a real possibility and my life was always open to that. Um, I grew up in Peterborough and like a lot of men had like a really rough time in, in when I was a young kid and uh, experienced some trauma and really kind of like lost myself to, to drugs. Um, I found that when I was a teenager, the connection that I felt in a community of people that were using drugs was unlike any connection I had experienced in life before that. Uh, it, drugs allowed me to survive. Um, and they really worked for a long time until they stopped working. Um, and mm. so I came into kind of like my mid twenties as someone that had lost their parents and as someone that was trying to get sober for the first time. And I returned to art making as this way to try to make sense of my experience. Um, I was definitely seeking a connection to my, my father and mother in their absence. Um, and I was also seeking a connection to that kind of old way of living. So what I would do is I would go to neighborhoods in Toronto uh, and photograph people and talk to people and have these little exchanges as a way to connect to all those things. Um, and at that time I was operating with a lot of blind spots and I thought that, you know, photography specifically had this real power to affect change. You know, like the stuff I was seeing, I was sure that if a lot of people saw this stuff, things were gonna change. But the more I thought about it, all I was doing was using my experience and, and I was someone with a lot of privilege to be able to walk through a neighborhood and then leave and go back to kind of safety. Um, and I was using other people's bodies to try to kind of make sense of my own experience and tell my own story. Um, and ultimately I just came to this place where I was like, photographing people on the streets is not going to create more housing for people. You know what I mean? Like it might, it might, uh, an image in a gallery might have some little shift in consciousness for the viewer where they maybe feel some, a, a moment of compassion. But I thought in the grand scheme of things, it was more important to put my energy into um, kind of like collective action that spoke directly to people in power to try to get these major systemic changes to happen. Well, that brings us to where your work is at now. And I know that we have a slide of, of the image that you have contributed to Up With Art. Uh, maybe we could see that and you could talk a bit about it, Jeff. Cool. Okay, so this is my friend Jimmy, uh, Jimmy James Evans. Jimmy's like one of the most beautiful, charismatic people in my life. He's just like, like everyone he meets becomes his friend. Um, and he's just someone I photograph all the time. I have a studio on DuPont that's named after him. It's called the Jimmy James Evans Friendly Meeting Place and Center for the Arts. 
and it's really for him and it's in honor of him. And, and, you know, everything I do, all my work is really about beauty. It's about like the beauty of my friendship and connection with Jimmy and like our experience. Um, and yeah, I guess I've just been like playing around with, with paint and photography. Um, I live with a lot of uh, works of my father's that are these large landscape photographs that are mounted on panel and painted into. And I've gotten to spend a lot of time looking at those. So for me, always there's these layers in my work. And one of them is definitely uh, always a conversation with my father about art. Um, and then on the surface, this is just kind of like a beautiful, intimate moment between Jimmy and I. Mm, that's, that's great, Jeff. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, Judith, if we could go back now uh, to talk a bit about uh, the history uh, between art and activism here in London, especially given the kind of work that Jeff's doing now. Um, you mentioned Greg Curnow, uh, his work and his influence, the founding of CAR and CARFAC. Uh, among a number of examples of London leading the way. Uh, Judith, what do you think were some of the factors that inspired and helped uh, generate this connection between art and activism in London specifically? Well, um, I think that it started in the studio. Um, Greg had a number of different studios, but even, even the first one was in the basement of his home. And it was a place where members of the community gathered, not just artists, but other people that he met. He was very um, intellectually engaged and interested in ideas. And London was smaller at that time. And many of the artist studios were in downtown London. So they were able to congregate more easily. And Greg was very welcoming and anybody could drop in at any time and have a discussion with him. So I believe it started in the studio. And then he's the one that started the artist run space, the Region Gallery which led to regionalism, which really, as I was thinking about it last, uh, the last few days, regionalism was, was really about community. It wasn't about a style of art. I think that's important. It was about artists coming together. And it was Greg who took the National Gallery curator, Pierre Teberge, to other artist studios, which led to the Landmark Heart of London exhibition, which really put the London artists on the map because that exhibition traveled from coast to coast. And there are, there are other examples, but one of the other things about Greg's work was that he started using text in his work to make the points. And you see text going through, all the way through his career, culminating in the last works that he did before he died so unfortunately in the, what he called the Deeds Abstracts work, which were about First Nations and the land holdings in London. And he would, I don't know what he would have done with that idea going forward from 92, but as usual, he was often a bit ahead of the curve. You know, his work, uh, Close the 49th Parallel, resonates with us today. He wanted to put a border, a 50 foot border along the US, sorry, 50 foot wall along the US border because of the cultural influences that were drowning out Canadian culture, things like that. Um, resonated with other members of the community. He always used humor though. I thought it was important that he did it with a light touch so that it was, um, people would laugh when they saw his math in North America, for instance, which eliminated the United States. And he wasn't a founder of CAR. I think we need to make that clear, but he was very supportive in um, always and was one of the first to sign up as a member. Right. Yes, there's some fascinating ideas there, especially uh, thinking about them now in 2020. Um, how else do you see his, his legacy living on uh, here in, in our region of the world? Oh, I think that his legacy lives on in the careers of younger artists who uh, found uh, a place in his studio. Jamili is a good example of that. Ron Benner, Wynne Jalentz. Greg Hill, the curator of Indigenous Art at the National Gallery, had a visit by Greg when he was a student at Fanshawe and found that he, that was the first time he'd seen an example of someone who could live by being an artist. And I think so that mm -hmm. example that he set was really, really important. Thanks for that, Judith. So Jamili, to what degree does someone like Greg Curnow influence uh, your work and your your formative years and and the the work that you're 
perhaps creating now? Well, there, there's so many overlaps and influences in, in um, terms of my own practice and my early years returning to London after studying in um, art schools in Italy, in Rome, in Florence, and later on in Beirut, Lebanon. I returned to London and to that very exhibition that Judith is referring to, The Heart of London, and I saw that piece, Close to 49th Para, and I was um, pretty radical already because, um, I mean, here it was 68, um, and I was already involved in internationalism and thinking about global issues. So I think that one of the aspects that became really important in terms of my dialogue with someone like Ray was not only the local, but also the international, the relationships that we could build internationally, and also, as Judith refers to, indigenous issues, and how important that was for so many of us in, the, in those years. Uh, I think another thing, too, is like both Jack Chambers and Greg Curnow had families. And, you know, as Jeff talks about growing up in a home uh, where your artist, where your, your parents are artists. Um, so many of us of that, in that period had children and um, they, those kids hung out together and they understood um, what certain kinds of values were important that, you know, that having a TV wasn't that important at a certain point or a car, that what was important was maybe learning another language. Um, I know that my son and um, Greg's kids, they both went, were among the first kids that went to Ecole Alexandra and into the French program here in London. So there was a really strong connection um, beyond uh, London and regionalism to other parts of Canada as well. So there, you know, you've got this layering going on where you're thinking about your own place and your place in that space, but you're also got you know, a lot of networks across the country. And then you're also looking out to how um, all of this connects with the rest of the world. And I, and I think uh, another really important aspect is cycling. We were all cycling at that time. So mm -hmm. I, I know when I bought my first bike, Le Jeune, I was French, it was a French bike and Greg Reno went with me to the bicycle shop to buy it. So there was so many overlaps in ways that, uh, as an example, that generation and even the generation before them, like Sawan and Irene Dudney, they were able to, they were pacifists, they were able to sort of point to progressive ways of being engaged within your own community. And certainly, I mean, the issue of people experiencing homelessness and being on the margins and on the edges um, in various ways was something that was extremely close to, to people who, say, came from another part of the world to London, Ontario as my own family did. Yeah. Thanks so much for that, Jamili. Uh, Jesse, uh, you're taking part in Up With Art this year. Tell us a bit about your work and how it might relate to some of the stuff that we've been talking about today. Oh, well, um, my background is in comics, zines, screen printed materials. Um, I'm interested in making work that is affordable, um, first of all, and easily distributed. Um, so I like the idea of my work being accessible to as many people as possible uh, on a practical level, not conceptually. That's a much more difficult to do. Um, I think I was asked to be part of this panel because I try to exhibit a sense of empathy in, in my work. Um, my art primarily deals with matters of like of the spirit of nature, um, how connected everything is. Um, and these are difficult ideas to articulate. Um, I found in my work, I, I, a better job putting these ideas out through just combinations of um, drawing shapes, colors, patterns, and letting like letting those inform a narrative. So my comics like this one, Crawl Space, is is very much about that. Of me trying to talk about and work out these ideas in my head, experiences I've had that are um, not easy to talk about without sounding like a little drippy hippie sort of. Um, which I do, I admit, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's my endeavor. Um, you know, I think um, I've gone through a series of transformations in my life, which have been worked out through my art. Um, and when you realize how connected everything is and how we all are to each other in the environment, um, it's kind of impossible for that not to inform your politics. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think that's why I respect Sylvia and what the Unity Project is doing so much. It's like they see 
they see all this injustice and all the suffering and, uh, and react with compassion. And I really uh, respect that. Yeah. I mean, it, it's interesting in that so much of your work is, uh, seems to be so inwardly focused in that you're working out a lot of your own stuff and, and your own uh, spirituality. Uh, to what degree do you think of your work as, uh, as activism? I, 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 to be honest, I, I don't, it is very inwardly, but I don't see the distinction of inward and outward as like a black and white um, um, dichotomy. I think it's sort of, I think we all work things out inwardly and then it's reflected in our actions. So I, I don't know. I, I think everyone's where they are mostly because of reasons beyond their control. It's like life's kind of a lottery and, and it all depends on what hand you're dealt. Um, and some people understand that, some people don't. Um, and I think that's kind of what one of the big political divides, like the realization of how circumstantial everybody's uh, like situation is. And you know, I think as artists, if we can communicate that notion of connectivity we can actually sway people to be a little more compassionate. And I think that's probably the goal of a lot of political activists as well. Um, I try to, this is all new for me. These are like my politics and my spirituality. It's stuff that's ongoing. It's a process, like all thoughts. So I'm trying to like work out like where I go with that, what I do, what do I do with that? How do I, how do I help with, with my mm -hmm. talents and what I can do? Mm -hmm. I think you hit on something really interesting there and that's, uh, compassion. I mean, when we think more broadly about uh, artists and people uh, who work for social justice may have in common, uh, I think, uh, Sylvia, I think you were making that point as well, that it's, it's really about being aware and, 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 and caring about what's happening in the world. Would you, would you agree with that? Well, absolutely. Everybody, everything that people have said, I've been uh, trying to like got all this pent up things to say now <laughs> um, uh, with regard to that. I mean, there, you know, I guess, and this is what has been so important about Up With Art is that it's not necessarily the art itself that is the activist thing. Uh, it's not necessarily the art itself that builds housing, but it is in the, um, uh, the meaningfulness and the drive that, brings us together as a community to both celebrate uh, and to activate ourselves for those kinds of common goals. And, and that's what the art is doing, is, is bringing us together around, you know, uh, common sensibilities. Uh, the things that we say, that we, we're seeing um, that are the injustices that we're seeing, the injustices that we're living, um, and the stigmas that are um, burdening us and weighing us down. Um, and art is really fun and the community around it is really fun. So when you, when you bring those together, this kind of you know, inspiration and joy to actually make things happen. So Jeff, while your art might not necessarily build housing, you've donated to, the, to this Up With Art show that is bringing together a group of people who are actually motivated and capable and if we can manage our conversation and and manage our activism properly that's what we can get that's what we can get as the uh, as the outcome and it feels like every year that we've done up with our and it's grown it's gotten us closer to that certainly in the city of london we've seen things happen in the city of london that are you know it's it's Far from perfect, it's still a nightmare, but uh, <laughs> with regard to homelessness. But, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think up with our and uh, Unity Project have been a huge influence on that um, with the community that we've brought together uh, through Up With Art. Yeah, and within those years, Up With Art has really developed a very special relationship with artists and, and collectors. So I wonder, Judith, do you think there are particular opportunities in the relationship that Up With Art uh, promotes between artists and, and collectors and, and the Unity Project itself? Oh, I think so, absolutely. <laughs> um, I've attended most of, not the first one, but every one since, and I was impressed from the first about how it brought together different communities. And besides being a really good party that everyone enjoyed, there was this sense that 
there were people who were working on the front lines dealing with important social issues. There were collectors, there were members of the community who uh, came mm -hmm. together and each year it grew and more and more circles became involved and it was important. And then I guess I would think perhaps about um, Jake Moore who was um, one of the early collectors of uh, Greg Kernel's work. And interestingly, he bought his first Greg Kernel at what we call the Art Mart, which was a similar um, situation with art on the walls that the community came to buy and interact with artists. That's the first time I saw Jamili was when she came in to put up one of her works on, at the Art Mart. And uh, there was this sense of similar sense, as I think about it now, of partying and community. And the, one of the ones that I was involved in in the 70s, there were 3,000 people at the Art Mart, all interested in looking at art and the community came together. So this is a bit of an extension. And it was Jake who then began to collect a lot of work to the point where his collection, I don't know if Brian will tell you if it still forms the largest single collection in the collection at Museum London. But he had, as Greg once famously told me, 62 Greg kernels in the collection because they came from, Greg, from Jake Moore. Wow. So that's, Brian. A, that's a way that... Did you want to add to that, Brian, to what uh, Judith was saying? Um, well, I think, I think bringing the community together uh, Collectors, but but also I think what, what's really interesting about up with art is the approach that it takes to the artists as well. And and one of the things that I've been impressed with over the years is the involvement of the participants at the Unity Project in the event. And and uh, right from the very start, I think they were um, they were participating artists in in the uh, show. Over the years, it evolved into uh, collaborations as well with some more uh, established London artists. And so I think the fact that, that the participants um, are equal partners in the event and show their work side by side with, with you know, some of the best artists, not only in, in the city, but in, in the country, I think is, is really sort of speaks to the kind of egalitarian uh, approach of the event, which is, I think, something that I've never really seen anywhere else. Mm. And has the museum um, had uh, opportunities come up that came from that connection with Up, up With Art? Uh, absolutely, I mean, th this is something that's in a sense a gift to us because one of the really important things for the museum is to, is to show its relevance to the community, but also to everything that we do should embody our values. And so we have an opportunity to either be a positive force in the community or, you know, in a sense, you could say a negative force. I mean, museums aren't neutral bodies. They, they make choices and, you know, I think should be judged on those choices. So the opportunity to be host for Up With Art and participate uh, in the Up With Art event, I think, hopefully sends a message to the community that these are the kind of values that we hold true and that we really believe that representation of, of issues in our community and, and uh, becoming kind of a forum or, or an opportunity to talk about those issues and to, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, move those issues along to a more positive conclusion are really part and parcel of what we should be about. Yeah. So Sylvia, when you look at how Up With Art has, has, has grown and, and, and evolved somewhat over the years, how has the, uh, the way that the community engages with the services of the Unity Project uh, responded to Up With Art? And I wonder if there are some particular ways that artists in some of the Unity Project community have, have come together in ways that you think might be especially valuable. Well, certainly some of the, the um really interesting things were the, the collaborations between Unity Project participants and, and established artists making our art together and um, creating some incredible works, right? Something really, you know, completely unique and interesting. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, there was a participant who once um, went, just went to the show um, 
And the, the morning after, as I was, you know, hauling some boxes and, you know, tearing down, you know, said to me, that was really amazing uh, going there and, be, and doing that. He said, you know, I could tell I was in a different class of people. I know that, but I didn't feel uncomfortable. And I, um, you know, and even though my feet are right here on the Unity Project property right now, in my head, it's a year from now, I'm submitting a piece of art to Up With Art. I'm showing up with a girlfriend and, uh, you, you know, I'm going to have a good time and, uh, and, and certainly did that. So it was a, a huge inspiration to that one individual. And that's just exemplary. There's been uh, plenty of other uh, really interesting um, uh, situations like that as well. But I guess I also wanted to say, like, just in terms of um, the museum, I mean, the Unity Project Partner uh, at, uh, Museum London Partner uh, last year for the first time in a formal way. And uh, Brian and others from the museum have been involved from uh, pretty much from the beginning, I think, um, you know, 2013, when Jamili Hassan and, and her partner Ron Benner um, did an exhibit of, of 40 works from their private collection as part of that show. And then, and really it's been, uh, that, that partnership is something that really demonstrates that intersection between arts and culture and social justice and how we make that happen together. So far from being just a, a host to Up With Art, Museum London uh, is in there like a dirty shirt, really. And it really does expose the stigma that, or the, it, it exposes and breaks down the stigma that somehow uh, art is the purview of the domain of the elite, while poverty is the absence of culture because it brings us together in that mm. way. And we just prove it all, all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> That's so beautifully said, and I think that's such a great note to end this on. Uh, that'll do it for today's panel on art and activism as part of Up With Art 2020. Thank you again to our guests today, Sylvia Langer, Brian Meehan, Judith Roger, Jamili Hassan, Jesse Jacobs, and Jeff Berg. And thanks to Patrick Mann for helping to facilitate our panel today. Uh, I'm Christella Torre. Thank you for watching and supporting Up With Art and the Unity Project.